Hi folks, welcome to a Zendesk tutorial video presented by Adelante. Today we're going to be covering the basics of Zendesk Explorer, also known as the data and analytics tool of the Zendesk suite. During this video, we're going to be covering how to navigate Zendesk Explorer. We'll be looking at how to create our own queries to pull the information that we need to see and how we can take these queries to build our own custom dashboards. Finally, we're going to have an overview of the Adelante custom built dashboard. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now to get started, we're going to want to navigate ourselves over to Zendesk Explorer. And to do that, we're going to get ourselves logged in to Zendesk. That will lead us either to Zendesk Support or Zendesk Guide. And regardless of where we log into, on the top right, we're going to see on the interface these four squares. If you hover over that icon, it's going to say Zendesk Products. This icon can actually be used to navigate between the Zendesk products in the, in the entire Zendesk suite. Let's go ahead and go down to Zendesk Explore. We'll click it open, and now we are going to load up Zendesk Explore. Now that we've logged ourselves into Zendesk Explorer, let's go ahead and map out the interface and see what we could do as a user that wants to look at and potentially create reports. On the left-hand side, Zendesk Explorer has a navigation bar. We'll see right at the top, we have the dashboard icon. Below that, we have the reports icon. And one lower than that, we have the data sets icon. These are gonna be the three main sections we're looking at as a regular user when we wanna look at or create new reports. Right now, we're actually already sitting on the dashboards library, which is part of that dashboard icon. Uh, this is the main page that you get onto when you log on to Zendesk Explorer. And from here, you can see that we have a page of existing dashboards that have already been built out onto Zendesk. Um, these five at the bottom here are actually built by Zendesk themselves, whereas we have a custom dashboard built right at the top over here. I'm able to look at all the dashboards that have been built out for the business, as well as my own personal dashboards if I wanted to look on the other tab. We do have a search bar that can be used to look at and search for specific dashboards. And then finally, if we're looking to construct a dashboard, we can click at new dashboard on the top right there. Right under the dashboards icon, we have the reports icon, which will open us to the reports library. This is going to be a list of different reports or queries that pull and filter for specific information that we might need to pull out either for ourselves or to build out new dashboards. Now that we have a basic understanding on how to navigate Zendesk Explorer, let's move on to the next section and take a look at how we can create a query that pulls in specific information that we're looking for. We're going to want to navigate to the reports library from before through the reports icon, and we're going to want to click on new report on the top right. But before we go into that, it's important to define exactly what are data sets and what are reports. Data sets are separate sets of Zendesk data. Each data set contains different metrics and attributes that you can use to build reports. In other words, Zendesk data is already broken down and organized into different data sets that can each individually be pulled and used to find specific information for your reports or queries. Now to break this down a little bit deeper, we're going to take a look at each of the available data sets on Zendesk Explorer. Zendesk data sets are actually broken down into different Zendesk products. So you have data sets for Zendesk Support, Zendesk Guide, Zendesk Talk, Zendesk Chat, and finally the Answer Bot. Selecting on Zendesk Support will show us what databases are hidden under the Zendesk Support product. We have tickets which will give us insight into ticket volumes, ticket activities. We'll be able to see what tickets are, are open and which tickets are solved, what groups are handling which tickets, reply times, satisfaction scores, and much more. We also have service level agreements or SLAs, which will report on the SLA performance of our tickets and of course our agents. We also have a backlog history, which, which gets us a snapshot of unsolved tickets at the end of any given date. And then finally, the updates history, which dives into the history of events during a ticket's lifetime, like the number of comments, how many times it's been reopened, the updater's name, and any other ticket fields that have been updated. 
Zendesk Guide will bring up other data sets such as article recommendation, which shows us the number of times an article has been recommended and how the resolution rate of those articles have performed. We can also look at knowledge capture, which measures the efficiency of articles in deflecting tickets. We have the knowledge base, which is going to track views on our knowledge base. We also have search, which is going to give us some insight into what our end users are actually searching for. And then finally, also community, which gives us insight into our community forums on the Help Center. Zendesk Talk really just has one data set, which is calls, but it covers a lot of information, such as the agent call volume of inbound and outbound calls, call legs, durations and activities, and also agent routing that's happening during these calls as well. Zendesk Chat, similar to Zendesk Talk, will allow us to see the chat engagement or chat volume that our agents have to work with, as well as individual agent contributions. Chat concurrency will also show us how many chats our agents have to handle at a time. Last but not least, we also have the answer bot data sets, which includes the article recommendations data set. This is going to show us the performance of our articles recommended through the answer bot, and we'll get to see the resolution rate as well as how many times articles have been recommended. The flow builder data set will allow us to look at the different channels that our, our end users are engaging with the answer bot and how many times those end users have to be transferred over to an agent. The other side, we also have reports, sometimes also known as queries, which are requests to pull information from specific data sets. And now that we have an understanding of data sets, let's go ahead and create a new report or a query and click on new report on the top right hand side of the reports library. Right here, we're going to be asked what data set do we want to pull from? Let's go with support and tickets. And on the bottom right, we'll click on start report. And now we're going to be opened up into the interface for a new report. On the top left hand side, we can spot the metric section. This section will define what type of information this report actually pulls from the Zendesk dataset. Let's go ahead and click on add. And let's say we're looking for the number of unsolved tickets. I can either navigate through this, scroll around, open up different groups here, or I can use the search bar up top and type in solved tickets. There it is. Let's go ahead and click solve tickets. And once we have that filled out as our metric, we're going to see we have 936 solved tickets. To the right hand side of metrics, we also see filters. This allows us to further specify what information we're looking at. So right now we're looking at the number of solved tickets. Perhaps we want to look at the solved tickets from a specific team. So I might click on add. And here, let's go ahead and type in group, ticket group. And from there, I have a new filter we can work with. Let's go ahead and click on the filter. And we can either choose to uh, include selected groups for this filter. For example, maybe we just want to look at support. We also have the option of excluding specific groups as well, but we'll just keep it at just the support team here. Go ahead and save it. Now we're just looking at 473 tickets. Now let's go ahead and add in another feature just for the fun of it, another filter that is, we'll click on add and we're going to look for ticket priority this time. And maybe we want to look at uh, just normal tickets. So we'll go ahead and apply that and we'll see that our numbers are all being adjusted right in the middle here. Underneath metrics, we have columns and rows. Columns and rows can house other attributes we can use to visualize our data. In the case of columns, it will break it down into one chart for us to look at, whereas rows will allow us to take that attribute and break it down into individual chart for each attribute value. Let's go ahead and add an attribute onto columns. Right now we're looking at the number of solved tickets, but perhaps we want to break it down by month and look at the number of solved tickets by month, perhaps when the ticket was solved. So we'll click on add under columns. And from here, we'll just type in month and we can pull in ticket solved month. Now that will turn our character of 40 over here into a visualization. So now we're seeing the number of solved tickets by month rather than just a simple uh, number of 40 tickets. 
Let's go ahead and move the ticket solved month attribute from columns onto rows and take a look at how that affects our chart here. So it turns itself from a graph into more of a table, but that's not the end of it for us. We can actually go to the right hand side and we have more things we could play with. Right at the top we have the visualization type. It's already set to auto, but maybe I am a fan of column graphs, so let's turn this into a column graph. And you'll notice that if it's set to the row, we actually have it divvied up into different charts. I have a chart for September. I have a chart for August. You can see that change over there. If I drag it back to columns, now we're going to actually see both months, um, both months show up on the same chart. Clarify, setting up attributes under columns will actually create a single chart or graph that has all the attribute values brought together, whereas setting the attribute in rows will create separate charts for each attribute value. Finally, once we are done setting up the parameters of our report, we can go ahead and save it on the top right. We'll be able to also add it onto a dashboard if we wish to do it from here. Speaking of dashboards, we can create custom dashboards just as we can create custom reports. Navigating ourselves back to the dashboards library, we can click on new dashboard on the top right hand side. Before we get into actually building a custom dashboard, let's take a look at what the definition of a dashboard is, which is the space to organize information from your Zendesk reports. Dashboards allow you to present information from multiple Zendesk reports in a single location built specifically for viewing and sharing. In other words, dashboards are a great way to organize your data and share it in a format that is friendly to look at for your managers, yourself, or even your executives. Now that we've covered the definition of dashboard, let's go ahead and go over the process of building out our own custom dashboard. Now there's a lot of different things that we can customize, such as the dashboard title, the tab options, the dashboard itself but we're just gonna be covering the widgets that we can add on the top left over here. Specifically, we'll be looking at adding a report, adding a data filter, and adding in a time filter. Let's go ahead and get started by adding in a new report. On the top left, we can click on Add Report, and from here, we can start checking in any reports that we want added in. For example, maybe I want to get a uh, ticket created by month slash date added in. We'll add the report, and what we're going to see is on the top left, we'll have this report populate on our dashboard. We can go ahead and move this around, fairly intuitive in that case. We can click on add once again, and let's go for another report. Maybe this time we want to see the number of unsolved tickets. So we'll have that checked in, and there we go, pops in another report. And for any of these reports that we add in, of course, we are able to adjust the size of the report. We can move it around. Um, configure it as we like. We are able to, on the top right of each report, we have a drop down arrow, and this lets us actually edit the report from the dashboard. Uh, we can edit the configuration, which is, of course, the chart, the colors, and the display format, and everything we discussed while creating our custom report earlier. And uh, under that, we'll also see the ability to rename it and set up and format this dashboard as we see necessary. Now, under reports, when we go back to add on the top left, we also have a data filter option. Data filters are actually global filters that will affect any and all reports available on the dashboard. Let's go ahead and add a data filter and let's choose something to filter by such as priority perhaps. So we'll go ahead and check in ticket priority and that will activate this filter for us once we click apply. Now from here, let's move everything around so we can see everything going on on our dashboard. Uh, now for the data filter, let's go ahead and click on ticket priority, and maybe we want to see the number of normal tickets. So I'll go ahead and apply this data filter, and we'll see that the unsolved tickets changes, as well as the tickets created by month and date. Or perhaps we want to look at the high priority tickets that will of course change it just the same. Going back onto add on the top left, we also notice we have a time filter. Time filter works really similarly. Instead of a specific data filter, we're looking at a time value this time. So let's go ahead and click on add time filter. And from here, let's say we wanna do uh, when the ticket was solved. So we're gonna select that. As I scroll down, we can also select how this filter will display. Currently, it renders as a calendar, but maybe we want to do common ranges just to simplify the filter a little bit. 
go ahead and close that and once again we're gonna just clean everything up here we'll just clean up that uh, data filter as well and we'll add in our time filter right to the top there so let's further uh, filter this report with the time filter and let's say we want to look at perhaps last week this will go from six to zero this time but if I go back to, uh, let's say, the last month, maybe we're going to see a little bit more happening. Looks like nothing for ticket priority, but perhaps if we set the priority back to maybe normal, we're going to see a few more things happen, at least on the uh, tickets created by month slash date. So this is really a basic look at how we can create dashboards. Obviously, there's a lot more options we could see below um, under the time filter, such as changing the metrics and attributes. Um, adding in tabs and bookmarks. There's a lot we could do on Zendesk Explorer, both for dashboards, for reports. Um, but for the for the time being of this video, what we're going to actually focus on after this is we're going to talk about the Adelante pre-built dashboard that gets set up. Now we're taking a look at the customer experience team overview built by the Adelante team as the custom dashboard onto Zendesk. We see right from the get-go that we have two tabs, the General Overview tab as well as the SLAs tab. And on the General Overview tab, we'll see we have different filters set up for the common date ranges over here and a little bit more of a granular time filter to the right-hand side. We do also have a ticket channel filter and a ticket group filter that we can use. Really quickly here, we can actually move on to the SLAs tab, and we'll see that the SLA tab actually has the same filters set up for it. But let's go back to the general overview, and we'll start talking about what we see under these filters. Let's begin by setting the time filter to all history so we can see as much tickets as possible. Um, we're going to go ahead and leave the ticket channel and ticket group filters alone for now. So as I go down to general ticket overview, we're able to see the number of created tickets. How many unsolved tickets do we have? How many tickets are one-touch tickets, which means they are resolved within one touch? And how many tickets are two-touch tickets? And we can also see the first resolution time median, which shows us the first time, or rather how long it takes for the first time that an agent is able to solve a ticket. Under there, we can also see the tickets created by channels. So we can see we're handling a lot of volume from email, followed by the web, voice, and API under that, and then it falls quite steeply um, below to the other channels. We also have the traffic overview, which shows us the tickets created and solved by date. We'll see it in this little comparison chart here, where of course we see that our solved tickets are trailing off towards the end a little bit. Maybe volume is getting pretty crazy. We can also look at ticket subject and category. This allows us to see how many tickets, how many tickets each ticket subject has actually acquired. Uh, under that, we can also see the tickets created by month, and that shows us our monthly volume. Under here, we have the satisfaction score. So with the satisfaction score, we're able to, with the satisfaction score overview, we're able to see the percentage of tickets that have been rated good, as well as the percentage of tickets that have actually been rated period. Next to that, we have the bad satisfaction tickets overview. This is going to let us see any tickets that have received a bad ticket. We'll be able to see the ticket ID as well as the assignee name. Under that, we have good satisfaction tickets versus bad satisfaction tickets. Just a simple pie chart where we can see a comparison of the uh, two different satisfaction scores we have. Under that, we also have the satisfaction score overview continued, which we can see the ticket count by week under that, the first reply time median by week, as well as the satisfaction score by week. And that covers it for the general overview. Let's go ahead and move on to the SLAs tab we see on the right hand side. We've already talked about the same filters that the two tabs share, but now we're going to talk and go a little bit deeper into the SLA data overview. We can see on the top left hand side here the SLA standards that we're looking at first reply time as well as next reply time. Next to that we can look at the SLA achievement rate so we're hitting our SLA targets all of them 44.4 percent of the time. Under that we can see that achievement rate uh, broken down into the different targets we're aiming for such as first reply time which we are hitting 46 percent of the time and next reply time which we're hitting 90 percent of the time. 
Under that, we are able to see the target achievement rate by week as well. So how are we on our SLA achievement rates over time? And that actually just about covers it for the, for the dashboard here for SLAs. Now that just about wraps us up for this Zendesk Explore tutorial. Once again, this video was presented by Get Adelante. If you found the video useful or liked it, then please go ahead and give us a thumbs up down there on the bottom. And if you'd like to follow us, follow us at getadelante.com. Thank you.